Welcome back. Now, up until pretty recently, we, when we thought about plastic surgery, we probably pictured Michael Jackson and the more extreme elements of showbiz in the US. But in the last few years, cosmetic surgery has really taken off in Ireland, and nowadays it seems like no big deal. It is still often a major operation, though, and some doctors are concerned the risks are being underplayed. Join us today to discuss our talking point, cosmetic surgery, is it worth the risk? We're joined by Dr. Patrick Tracy of the Aylesbury Clinic, journalist Antonia Leslie, who's had a number of procedures, and Marie Loftus from the cosmetic surgery magazine Rejuvenate. You're all very welcome. And uh, I'm with Susan Daly, columnist with the Irish Daily Star, and I'll also be getting your calls and comments from home. Patrick, if I can come to you first, obviously Kanye West's mother dying while or shortly after her cosmetic surgery has made the headlines recently mm -hmm. and it brings the whole thing back into focus again. They obviously are able to afford the very best in care out there. How common is it for something to go as badly wrong as it did here? Okay, it's a very good question. The mortality rate from general anesthesia is one in 5,000. In cosmetic surgery, it's better than that because in ordinary surgery, obviously you're bringing in people from road traffic accidents, cancer cases. In cosmetic surgery, the sort of things that tend to tip the balance are number one, people having procedures like she had done. The first thing is an abdominoplasty or tummy tuck. Inherently these people are fatter, they sort of are a surgical risk of high blood pressure and knowing her ethnic background, most probably she had diabetes on board as well. I've certainly worked in the United States with um, people of that ethnic background where we'd have commonly cardiac arrest without any surgery. Now you add into that the fact that she had a second procedure done, I think it was a blepharoplasty, so you're increasing your duration. What's blepharoplasty time. for people? Um, sorry, she had a breast reduction, didn't she? Mm -hmm. I think it I was. Think that's yeah. what it was. Um, so two big procedures back to back at the one time, you're increasing your um, surgical risk dramatically because so the normal why, procedure why, time... Why was she allowed to go ahead with that, with, with all the factors that you're talking about? Why was she allowed to, to continue to have two procedures like that? Yeah, it, it would, um, I would query that myself. Mm. Certainly, her, probably her operation time may have been as high as eight hours with somebody that um, is obviously overweight as well. So, I don't know, it may be the fact that surgeons have done it before and got away with it and mm -hmm. sort of, you know, um, are less afraid of doing it than somebody that may have had their hands burnt before, but it would seem to me to be an inherently much higher risk. What you're talking about there, surgeons doing it before and getting away with it, there is a lot of fear out there about people not being regulated, particularly in this country, that you don't know who you're getting when you go to a surgeon or you're interested in maybe in, in, in having a procedure done. Do you feel that's a problem? Absolutely. In Great Britain and Ireland, I mean, the, particularly in Ireland, the lack of regulation um, is abysmal. I mean really this What would you be looking for? <clears throat> what would be the ideal? Okay, what we need is a couple of things. Immediately the Irish government should set up a commission for safety and quality of health care. We should look at all the establishments that's providing either cosmetic surgery or non-cosmetic procedures and we have to sort of look at them in such a way that they have to evaluate staffing levels, they have to evaluate support services, they have to evaluate what sort of equipment they have. As well as that, this commission should have the power to inspect all the places um, not only regulate None of that them, happens but at the moment. Them. Nothing happens. We should have a kite marked single or sort of little symbol like the Healthcare Commission quality. of the United States of quality control that hmm. goes on to every advertisement so a patient knows beforehand whether sort of it is past government procedures or not. And also the last thing which is almost the more important, this commission should have the power to um, take away people's licenses or the registration. I mean, this is basic in every other country. I mean, sure. I'm not, uh, there's other reasons why, why it hasn't happened Why is plastic surgery now. being treated differently to other surgery than in this country? We, we're hearing so much about, this, uh, recently, a survey about people arriving in who've had surgery abroad, people with botched jobs being done, having to go to the likes of yourself to get stuff fixed. Okay, well, this, this is the result of a survey done by the British Association of Plastic Surgeons that Rajiv Grover sort of released last Friday. And it shows that um, of BAPS members, 80% have treated one to three patients from overseas for retreatment, 38% um, have treated two to five patients, and 14% have treated more than nine patients. There's many reasons for this. I mean, the first thing is people that probably can't afford procedures in this country tend to go overseas, and as a consequence, may cut short the recovery time. Mm. Some of them are coming back to Ireland or Britain just to get their stitches out after facelift procedures. And obviously if they're going as far away as South Africa, they increase the risks of having deep vein thrombosis, sure. which is a risk anyway post-surgery.